You are listening to Drag Dungeon. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Periscope. Subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. Cause everything looks good on you. You better work. Working girl, supermodel of the you world. better work. Working girl, supermodel of the world. Work. Supermodel. Work. Supermodel. Work work. your lips. Make love to the camera. To the make a thing go right. It takes two to make it out of sight. Supermodel work. Welcome to Drag Dungeon with Jay and John. What's up, John? What's up, Jay? What are you wearing? Oh, thanks for asking. I'm wearing my RuPaul's Drag Race finale look. So I'm like covered in butterflies and also <laughs> spiky spikes. I'm like trying to like combine all their outfits. So yeah. Wearing you know. Cameron Michaels Queen of the Night Whitney Houston outfit. Yes. And yeah. uh, Asia's, you know, butterfly mess and Aquaria's amazing everything. And <gasps> there's so much we got to get. To. Look, guys, we're not going to do a lot of hot topics. We're going to get into it. Yes, I'm ready to talk. I've held back as much as I could. You know, we, John and I text each other a lot. I'm like, I've held back and I'm about ready to explode. So let's talk about hot topics. What do you got? Okay. My one and only hot topic is Joe Jackson head of the Jackson dynasty, the one that beat the talent into all those children, has died. Oh, it's a sad day for no one. I'm sorry. sorry, 89 years old. I know it is kind of, well, I don't want to say anticlimactic. What's the word? (laughs) Anticlimactic. 89 years hateful. Yeah, it's not surprising when you're 89. I mean, he was, I think him and Catherine were separated even, weren't they? Yeah, they haven't been together for a while. That family's so weird. They all, like, keep secrets. And, like, remember when they, like, kidnapped Catherine and took her to rehab or something in Arizona? It's so weird. Yeah. And it, it's what, all about money. What was the thing about Joe Jackson, like, having a stroke in, like, a strip club in South America or something? <laughs> what I mean, was that? it's fucking fabulous, whatever it is. <laughs> I don't know. I don't care if it's true or not. Oh, I do remember that. Yeah, and he was, like, 85, or it was, like, not that long ago. Like, I don't remember the exact details, but I remember Janet had to, like, step in or something. And then what's all this stuff with Janet and her and having these, like, uh, fights with her ex-husband over their kid and child welfare being called up? What is that? Okay, uh, well, thank you for bringing up, Janet, because my main concern in all of this is, is this going to delay Janet's new single? I know, right? <laughs> Let's get to what really matters. Is it going to delay the single we've been hearing about? Because I thought it was coming out at that Essence Festival or whatever. I didn't hear shit about it. I heard she was depressed. Uh, welcome to the club. Where's the fucking single? Yeah, depression can help create the best art, Janet. I mean, it totally go with it. can. Yeah, it's, uh, all kinds of mental illness. It makes great music and entertainment. You know, I mean, you may end up in suicide or floating in a bathtub, but, you know, at least we have some bops. Speaking of that, well... I just read Entertainment Weekly. There's a new Whitney Houston documentary coming out called... Oh, Whitney we're going Entertainment. together next week. Yeah. We're going. <laughs> it sounds, like, interesting. Like, what I read was, like... Well, the only, okay, the only problem is it's, like, supported by Whitney's people. So you know it's going to leave out the really well, good stuff. Well, no, because they, they do go there with the drugs. But that's not even the juiciest stuff, though. I know. Like her having a relationship with a Queen woman. Latifah. No, mm-hmm. that's not her name. What's her assistant's name that was a lesbian? Sheila Jackie. It was somebody. Yeah. I know who you're talking about, though. So there was that story. I, I'll be surprised if they go into that. I, I don't know what they could say. I was watching Daily Pop. I need to quit that show because they're getting on my nerves. Um... And they were like, oh, because apparently Bobby Brown, everybody participated because, you know, they all want to check. They're, they're yes. all, they've all been living off Whitney for decades now. So why, why stop now? So Pat Hughes, Stan and Sissy, whoever the hell. And um, Bobby Brown apparently came in for one part and talked about the positive times with Whitney. And then when they went with the drug questions, he peaced out. And the director was like really frustrated about it because he had a really good project here. I mean... That never before has there been a, a Whitney documentary or special where ever. Of course, there's been shit on reels, which is like tabloid television. We love it, but it's tabloid. Yeah. This is where the whole family came together. But Bobby did not want to talk about the drugs. I think he feels like he's being blamed for it. I don't blame Bobby for the drugs. 
Well, I mean, think about his life, too. I mean, Whitney died, and then Bobby was... Jr. <laughs> I don't know what you call yeah, her. Yeah, Tristina. Tristina. She died. It's, like, all his fault, basically. <laughs> he can't dance anymore. He has no career. I mean, he's suffered enough. Like, it's fine. Like, she picked up the pipe on her own or whatever, allegedly. Like, everybody makes their own choices. We're not going to blame you. But no, yeah, I but... do want to go see it. I At first, I didn't want to see it. I was like, who the hell's going to the movie theater to see a Whitney Houston uh, documentary? And then I saw some promotions for it, and I was like, I really want to see this shit. Well, they just had one on. Was that Reels that that was on? Or where that's where they inter- had the biggest part about her alleged lesbian relationship. I say lesbian relationship. Her alleged relationship with her <laughs> assistant, who happens to be female. I don't. Th- I don't think the Houston family's listening, so I think we're okay. Liz, okay, tell well. the legal department. Uh, I, well, there was in the past few years. There's been a Lifetime movie which was pretty good. It starred Yaya Yukasta, I think her name is. She was on an Air- America's Next Top Model. What, what, what her name is? Yaya Yukasta. Okay. Yaya. Yaya. Isn't that like slang for vagina? Not that I know of, but maybe. Yeah. Maybe we can her, make it happen. I saw her Yaya yeah, yeah. in it. Yeah. Angie. Angie. <laughs> Angie. The Lifetime movie was good, but it, it was just about the good years. Like, I want to see, like, snorting lines. And, and all, I want all that juicy gossip. And, like, the family is more than willing to talk. Enough time has passed to where it's respectful. Let's just go there. We know everything about Elvis. It's not going to change the fact that Whitney had some of the best songs ever and one of the best voices ever. I don't care. Yeah, I definitely think enough time has passed. I mean, everybody knows she had a lot of struggles, so it's not going to change her opinion of anybody. Plus, how much in the vault shit can they possibly release for her to where, you know, they'll be making a lot of money and they need to be concerned about you know, losing money on it. I mean, it's just going to be rehashed greatest hits for the, till the end of time. Right. Probably. I don't, I don't feel like she had a Prince fault. I don't think she was thinking no. that far forward, but, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. You know, one thing we had to talk about is on Instagram, someone commented that they want to know what we think about Dragula. Well, we definitely need to talk about Dragula. And when season three comes up, we should definitely, we're going to recap it. Um, John, We've talked about Dragula before, like I'm interviewing you. We've talked about Dragula before. Did you watch season one and two? No comment. Okay, well, here's My publicist the deal. told me not to comment. I know. you're. It's fresh to you, this show. So definitely, I, I'm going to give you, like, certain episodes to watch. No, I, I can that... watch the whole thing. I can. It's on Amazon. It's free. I'm, I'm totally there. Look, at Do this it. point, I hate Drag Race so much. No, you don't. You love it. No, look, we can still talk about it. No, people keep <laughs> listening. It's good to have two sides of the... I'm like the Fox News when it comes to Drag Race. I, I absolutely hate it. It's fake news. I don't believe it. I don't like it. So uh, we're going to... I think it's good to have both sides because you're still kind of one foot in. So yeah. I hate Drag Race and I'm willing to talk about it. But uh, that's a layered issue. I'm going to tell you my other part about that in a minute but i want to watch dragula because if it's something different and plus we're going to get the other podcasts going which you're welcome to chime in anytime pop issues follow us on instagram at pop issues um so we can talk about housewives and stuff but jay you're welcome at any time as a founding member it used to be reality disorder but i'm willing to watch dragula because i'm telling you i've had it up to here with drag race <laughs> up to where i can't see nothing um no i um yeah so dragula and i know i like totally quizzed you right then i know you haven't watched a lot of it but i know that you're gonna love it when you do and um so the winner of season one of dragula was vander von odd who will actually scare you in that season one Lisa like, i think she was scary bibbidi bobbidi boo um, and then season two, the winner, this is all spoiler alert. Well, look at you just spoiling this shit for me. I haven't even watched it yet. All right. I won't say season two. Who wins, but because season two, well, season one's that's not really no, a surprise, but season two, uh, maybe a little bit, but, um, I think that it's going to, season three is going to be amazing. I can't wait. I've When's been fans of the Boulet brothers for a very long time um soon like season one just ended in like january or something and they've cast for season three um it's like so, yeah. low budge right it well it's probably getting bigger because season one was super low and then season two was a little bit more and then i think season three will be 
incredible. I think Dracula has. I think it could take over. Like I don't. It's never going to be on Logo because Logo could not take it. You know, there's they would try to change basically everything about Maybe it. Maybe like Sci-Fi or HBO or Cinemax. Po- you know, possibly it's like on Out TV. Um, and you can watch it on YouTube, and now it's on, like, Netflix or whatever. Amazon Prime, it's on there. Amazon Prime. Yeah, it's, it's definitely worth um, checking out if you haven't watched it, listeners. Um, so watch it, and then when season three, come back and we'll talk about it, because it's there's a lot to talk about. No, on I'm going to watch it. I have to watch Pose first, and then oh, I'm going to... Yeah. I know. I'm not into the whole ball thing, you know. Uh, Paris is burning never happened but whatever but Sandra Bernhardt's gonna be on pose I gotta watch it you know, so I can <laughs> know my her history Paris is burning never happened it was a lie it just never like, happened just like I won't even say <laughs> but drag race has had the monopoly on drag for way too long people's no names people's egos are so inflated and bloated and ridiculous that reunion turned me off so bad i am ready for somebody else to step up to the plate and be like look there are other drag queens out here there's another opportunity there's all kinds of opportunities it just has to be super quality and i think that this finale the next next one they need to revamp this shit because i think the biggest problem was is this was just like the last however many and everything starts blurring together and you know it's getting like Rue's running out of gimmicks where this had like all season one you know come out like they already did ones with the, all of the winners like like it's done they need to redo this finale I think I think Drag Race probably needs which I just don't think they're going to do this especially because supposedly this was the biggest um, ratings ever they need to revamp the whole show but I don't know if they'll do it I don't know. When I saw that The Price is Right wheel come out, I was like, okay, red light, I'm out of here. <laughs> like, this, it's too much. All right, well, let's talk about Drag Race. Well, um, let's do that. Okay, so first of all, you know, not lots of um, music and singles and shit have been coming out from the winners and not winners <laughs> of this season. Um, like, so we talked about Blair St. Clair, her mini album, um, Oh my god, what the hell is it called? They just downloaded Welcome it. Welcome to me or something? No. Welcome is it to Call music? My Life? Call My Life. Call My Life. That's the song. So um, that just came out, and it was number one on the iTunes dance chart, which is pretty good for her. Well, I was like number 200-something once for oh. like, like half an hour. <laughs> Luck. <laughs> Don't try and take my achievements away from me. <laughs> I didn't even have to do, do drag. <laughs> Okay, I'm like elbow deep in a margarita right now. Don't judge me. How do you even get on that freaking chart? Like, <laughs> our podcast, when it first started, was on the podcast episode chart for about 30 seconds. We were like on the new and sizzling hot new trending. We're like, we were like 164, 148 once. Oh my like, God, you like, couldn't tell me shit. I was feeling myself. I was I, out in the world. Like, yes, that's me from the podcast number 168. You know, right? I was out slapping cops and stiffing waitresses. Oh, I was so like, does. okay. You want an autograph? <laughs> I know. I'm like, you need my ID. My face is my ID, motherfucker. Life you know, that was me. Here. Oh, totally. It was great. <laughs> it was great. We'll get back there. We'll get back there. Yes, we will. We'll be number one one of these days. Um, so one thing I'm going to tell you about um, Blair St. Clair's album. There's a line, because she has a song with Alaska Thunderfuck, which is always amazing. If I were going to do an album... I would want her on there if I was doing drag or not, because I love her. Mm-hmm, me too. And one of the lines with this song called America Sweetheart they're doing that's like, blowing up my phone like Tyra Sanchez. <gasps> <laughs> I love it. Okay, I'm buying it. Sold. Yeah, it's good. The whole I'm thing buying good. that. I love the inappropriate humor. Yeah, good stuff. So hers is really great. Definitely check it out. And I was looking to see who else had shit out. So I guess, um, you know, Aquaria released a single called Burn Rubber, which Burn really what? surprised Burn Rubber. Okay. But surprised me because there hasn't been a lot of talk about it. And, and on iTunes, it's not like anywhere. There's not like a ton of reviews. It was like two. Is it good? But it just, 
But yeah, it's different. It, it goes along the darker music lines of like Violet Tchotchke sort of deal, which was kind of... Oh, her song was so good. Yeah, and, and it's kind of amazing that she did that because that's what we love. I'm not sure Drag Race fans will love that. They'll probably lean more towards the Blair St. Clair EDM, emotional EDM, like dance in the club kind of shit, which is good. But I'm like, oh, I like this Aquaria, but probably no one's going to buy this. I almost don't care. I have higher hopes for Aquaria. I feel like she's going in a different direction. I feel like she could be, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I feel like she could be like the most successful winner ever. And I'm not just saying that because it's the current season, but I just feel like she's better than the show even. Like I could see her modeling in Paris, like doing fashion spreads in Vogue. I could see all that kind of shit. Well, she'll have to step it up. Cause, you know, Sharon Needles, who is her drag mother and my favorite of all time, she was, like, on the cover of Out Magazine. She did a PETA ad. That ain't shit. Like, she I'm did. talking about real fashion. Mm-hmm. Real fashion. like Out Magazine and PETA, Out that's Ma- nothing. Wendy Williams <laughs> did PETA. Like, no, that's, no, that's <laughs> nothing. I, I think it's amazing. No, I mean, it's something. But I think Aquaria has real potential to... I mean, walk a runway for whomever, Versace, whatever. And, you know, I also read with um, Aquaria that I guess she asked Sharon Needles, like, was giving her suggestions about Snatch Game. And she said that Sharon suggested, like, during Melania Trump, she, like, flip her name tag over and have it say Caitlyn Jenner and have her change her voice. Oh, my God. Hi, boys. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like that would be funny but probably shouldn't do that i mean i would have loved it but that was a good choice conveniently the whole season they did not mention share needles once because of the reasons we said previously yes they have not funny how they never mentioned that because they saw what was gonna happen i mean not to jump ahead but didn't you think these lip syncs kind of favored query like or maybe it was just me i couldn't take my eyes off of her during it all i mean i forgot other people were there oh oh me too who did she lip sync against eureka um eureka and then the final three lip sync well what Mm -hmm. one more to mention a music thing i want to mention is eureka just put out a single called big girl i guess hated it no i haven't even heard it but i'm sure (laughs) well it's not on itunes it's just on youtube which i thought was interesting um there's a video and at first i really liked it i'm like oh this is good then about halfway through i'm like no never mind because it's such a i mean good for her use her shit she's a big girl use it you know Mm -hmm. all the past big girls tried to do it and weren't really very successful with you know being their shtick but i mean you know go girl i mean like if I think my thing was when I first started watching, I liked it. Then she opened her mouth, and then she said something. Oh, I love it, or something like that. I'm like, oh god, shut up! I can't I, listen to your voice. I don't need no. I'm gonna pass on that one. I think my top two, just off the top of my head, favorite drag queen songs are "Hot Couture" from Manila. Love it. It's auto tuned to death, and I fucking love it. Mm-hmm. And of course, Betty by um, Violet. Yes, I love Betty too. My favorite of all time is Sharon Needles. Um, this club is a haunted house. That's my favorite. That's a good one. That's really good. So is Call Me on the Ouija Board. Sharon's first album, PG oh, Thirteen. Is is, yes, their first Sharon album stands is alone. She and plus she is a superior performer. Um, she is. She and you know one thing that made her it's made her pretty successful, made her very successful is. Whenever something happens, she immediately, like, jumps the fuck on it. Like, with Caitlyn Jenner, where she did that Vanity Fair cover. Mm-hmm. You know, like, the cover. Like, she, like, dressed just, like, in that bathing suit with a beige background. And then lip sync to I'm Just a Girl. <laughs> so, like, she jumps on it. Like, when Lady Gaga did the... She's on the um, pulse. Yeah, she did the Super Bowl. Sharon posted something like, thanks, Lady Gaga, for wearing something, like, I have to rush... To, to make or something like that. I can't remember what she said. So she's like on it. So when something happens, she's there. Love it. Love you, Sharon. Yeah. And Ale- I love the whole dynasty. I know, right? Who's next? Uh, super exciting. Whoever a queer can pop out of her uterus. Ugh. <laughs> 
So, and I, I was like, Cameron isn't doing anything. I think she is going to blow this whole thing. I'm like, just go, girl. Like, I was rooting for you a little bit after that whole, like, coming for her because she's not super open. But when she's like, yeah, my fans expect me to do music now, and I don't know. I'm like, girl, come on. No one will care about you in, like, days from now. That so. is so true. That's the kind of... When I said I don't like her personality, that's what I don't like. It's like the faux modesty, like the humble, oh, I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to do it. Like, I'm not, I don't fault her for like hiding that she did share in her own act back home and then came here and did share. And like, that's fine to me. That's playing the game. Um, knowing you can do a decent share impression, but like all the, you know, I just feel weird about wiping her name off the mirror. That's what really turned me off. It's like, girl, like, <sighs> stop being so extra like just wipe the, wipe the mirror clean you won fair and square this is how it goes i do such a terrible share i know we've talked about this before but i've worked on it and it's still lousy like you know that <laughs> we'll do it Fernan- we'll auto-tune it for the, for okay. the broadcast because you know fernando we that came out on itunes so you can now download that and i have um apple music so i don't really need to download things but if it's something like that i want to support the artist so I totally bought Cher. And that song. And, you know, I really think that song, Fernando, is, like, made for Cher. Isn't that, like, perfect? With all that vibrato? Yes. It's, like, perfect. Okay. Let's hear it. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think. Do you want to do what? There's something in the air at night. <laughs> Fried for panto. <laughs> you just made my day. <laughs> so terrible. <laughs> it's so bad I can't do it. Can you hear the drums, Fernando? <laughs> oh well, look, we're gonna auto tune that, it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> oh my god, I love Cher so much. I just every time I listen to a Cher song I like go into like I go into like that, you know, when she did Beavis and Butthead, she did I Got You Babe with them and it was like real psychedelic. Like, you know, like spinning different colors and stuff. That's almost what happens to me when I listen to Cher. I go into this like trance. I know. I, I almost it's wanted to go into a Janet trance after this, after the lip syncs. I was like, because I was having PTSD flashbacks to the tour that we went to. And I was like, oh my God, I forgot I'm a Janet Jackson fan now. Yes. Yes. And those are good songs. Like they pick good Janet songs to perform. Like I have no complaints about those. They do. Everybody loves that damn if song. If I have to hear it, I'm like, I just hate the title. If it's so boring, but I know everybody loves the dance and the video and yes, but you know, I'm late to the Janet, the Janet game. So, well, and you know, we'll mention is Asia has a single out too called queen for tonight or something. Oh. But I'm not, I don't know. I don't love it, but you know, people are real harsh on these Queens. Like they can't sing or they can't, I'm like, give it up can't sing like that's not even a valid argument i don't care about that right it's been 10 years of this shit being released so if you think you're like gonna go online and leave some review like you're some sort of like fresh and new take on it when you're like this is so auto-tuned i'm like you're pointing out the obvious just shut up sit down and let's just enjoy it for what it is because go back to season one bitches put out singles um it's it's all the same. It's never going to change. So just going out there like you're somebody. Like, I think this song is so auto-tuned. Oh, please. Like, I'd be okay. more surprised if it wasn't auto-tuned. As long as I can tell they put some effort into it and it's some. It's not just bullshit. Like, su- hashtag support the arts. Like, mm-hmm. support the queens. Like, I love Shangela's song, Working Girl. Like, that's a great song. But I didn't really like her other stuff that she's done but i really like that like and it's not even a good song okay let's just be honest it's a terrible song but i still really like it oh tatiana tatiana i like all of tatiana stuff tatiana's first song was not good but i still really liked See it and her hands. that wasn't her first song but that's a really great song and then she just put out an album called t1 which is actually really good you know you heard that one song it's like this like dark kind of dance stuff well, I love See Me With Them Hands. I know that wasn't her first. She did some other yeah. BS. Yeah, yeah. But, but I heard that the album isn't great. But I'm, I haven't heard it. Um, I like some of it. Like that single that I can't think of the name of. I really like. <laughs> really made an impression <laughs> on you. <laughs> I just can't, I can't think of the name of it. But I like her enough to where it's like I could be willing to like overlook some 
you know, inferior lyrics and production value just because I like her. Well, and you kind of have to, you kind of just have to do that. I'm looking up what that song is called because I do not remember. I'll tell you who I'm not interested in, okay, since we're being ruthless here. I'm not interested in, um, oh, I just blanked. I'm not interested in Willem's music. I'm not interested in um, who won season uh, six. Raja? No. no. No, I like Raja. Who won season five? Jinx. I'm not, Jinx. Inter- I'm not interested in Jinx's music. The Tatiana song is called Try, by the way. It's really great. Try. Try to listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> try to try to get a refund. I, I do like that song. <laughs> Willem's music. I liked Willem's music like right when Willem started. Then she became such an asshole. That's what I'm saying. I, t- I don't like her. I don't like hers, and it's affecting. I can separate like good music from people I don't really care for. Willem, yeah. I just feel like he's an asshole. I don't like him. Yeah, I don't either. Plus, he kind commented, of... like, one time we tagged him on a post, and he tagged, he said something nasty, like, stop tagging me. And I'm like, well, fuck you, then. I'm trying to support your broke ass, trying to help you sell some of your shitty singles. Fuck off. I, kn- I know. It's like, you'd be, be glad someone cares about you, you stupid... Okay, I'm gonna stop Somebody right tags <laughs> me in, like, some spam or porn, and I'm like, thank you. I know, for real. I get mad if they don't do it. Right. Like, shoot. I'm trying to think, who else had some really good drag music? Um, so we got Tatiana, we got Sharon, Willem when she first came out. Oh, I don't care about, you know who I don't care about? And this is crazy because she did a duet with Carney Wilson is, um, oh my God, I just like that her name. Somebody should have a duet with Carney. Yes. Yes. It's, um, oh, what's her name? We oh, hate her gut. Cupcake. She's the same. Could you say cupcake? <laughs> <laughs> my mom want to love by real bad. No, it's, um, she was in the season with Violet Ch- Chachki. Um, I just seen that new movie coming out. Um, Ginger Minj. Oh my god, I couldn't think of her name. She duetted with Carney. I think you told me this. Yes, like a long time ago. Everybody makes mistakes. We won't hold it against you, Carney. Yeah, no, it's pretty sad. But um, <laughs> I don't care about her either. Anyway, that's the drag. That's the drag music news of the week. <laughs> yeah, since we didn't have any Madonna news, there's your drag drag news. You know, I don't have any Madonna news. Like, there, I read something about she was harassing her neighbors or something, but it was such a boring story. I'm like, get a Madonna. Who cares? I don't care about this. Oh my God, can you imagine anybody better to be harassed by? I know, right? I would be like, thank you. Remember, she, I've heard several stories about because, of course, she has New York apartments and huge buildings and, like, she's done all kinds of illegal shit. She was painting shit on the street saying no parking that was illegal. She was building a dance studio above people's private homes and just dancing at all hours of the night. I mean, she's fucking fabulous. Like, she can <laughs> do no wrong. Do you remember the story? This was a news story and I'll just never forget it. And they interviewed this man who was like staying at this hotel or something with Madonna or they worked out at the same gym or something. And he was like working out, watching some TV show. And she supposedly came in and changed the channel and got on like the elliptical or something. And they like interviewed him, (laughs) him saying how rude she was. I'm like, this is an actual article? Thirsty ass. I'd be honored. (laughs) I'd be like, yes, girl, I'm going to watch what you're watching. I'm going to live your lifestyle. Whatever you're into, I'm into. Let's do this, Vogue. I don't care. She do should, it. like, do a goop thing, like Gwyneth Paltrow. Just, like, I don't know what it'd be called, but, like, material girl. Like, I just want to do everything Madonna does. Well, you know, she has the Macy's. That Macy's line is still going strong, which shocked me, because I thought it would last about a second. Not the skincare. Oh, the no, clothes. No, the material girl, yeah. I don't, isn't that like junior sizes? I mean, I'm pretty teeny. I don't know if I can fit in a junior I know. It'd just be like, it's like a tent on me. I'm so like, you know. I don't know if I can fit into junior stuff. girl sizes. I mean, goals, but I don't know. I know. Diet goals. <laughs> okay, so Drag Race finale. At the very beginning, so this is the first thing that jumped out at me that was um, something to note. You know, when they show Rue, like, we're in that black sequence thing and that lighting, like, talking, you know, like, that close. You know what I'm saying at the very beginning? Did you notice she had, you could see her lip liner and it made it look like she had a mustache? No, I didn't, but I will that go back and look. That bugged the shit out of me. 
yeah, watch that. It bugged the shit out of me when I was watching it. I'm like, why that? Why? You're not supposed, unless you're like in the movie Deliverance or some like, you're not supposed to see <laughs> Liv Deliverance. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you're like some trashy girl, well, you're it not is- supposed to see the lip liner. That's true. They can't, um, of course, doing these like live shows, they can't do all the trickery for, and you know, they have all those angles just right for when they're sitting at the judge's table. So I did notice a little chicken neck, uh, no judgment, a little chicken neck. And some Touch this st- skin, darling. Touch all of this skin. This MDNA skin. And I noticed some flyaway hairs on that wig. Oh, my God. Well, this show is falling the fuck apart. I mean, I mean, we're being such bitches right now. Like that... Burn it down. <laughs> Burn it all down. No, I, I don't. I we detected flaws. Okay, that's all we're saying. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what happened with that, but just check out that mustache thing and let me know if you I'll see get the back same to thing. You. I'm making a note. Okay, so at the beginning, they bring out all the season one queens, which, like I said, that's a gimmick. Now check that off the list. They're not going to be able to do that again. Um, I was They all looked the same, which I thought was pretty interesting, considering how much time has passed. I mean, I'm sure they got a little bit more money that they can get some shit pulled back and snatched and stretched and wrapped around their heads. I was surprised at how many of them I remembered, like Rebecca Glasscock and shit. I'm like, damn, I actually remember. Angina, of course I remember. Angina was kind of like the um, founding queen of the vulnerability runway moment, the elimination breakdown. I have I've been living with HIV. Remember that? That was like one of the first. Ever since like Pedro on the Real World, I'm going real back, real way back. Now. back. But like Angina kind of originated that, and it felt. Gen- I remember tearing up at that moment. I did it. But okay. okay. <laughs> so tell us about your heart of stone. <laughs> Fernando. Fernando. Um No, I, I I did. I I didn't. But I mean, yeah, she's like the Christopher Columbus of this whole thing. Um and I Rebecca Glasscock <laughs> at the time <laughs> <laughs> at the time I liked her okay I liked it because everyone else hated her because she was pretty which I mean I'm like I could totally relate to that right. so like that's totally. it and um so I and I remember her like last when they were filming that video with Caswell and her wig kept being wonky and she kept <laughs> leaving to fix it and shit I'm like this would happen to me you know I could just relate to her um you know and so I liked her. There and was Nina a couple of them that I did. Nina Fla- Let's talk about Nina Flowers yes. for a second. Google it, Loka. If you don't know who That's she is. That's where that came from. Yes. N- Nina Flowers, though, everybody's obsessed with her, and I'm not. Really? Well, I mean, she just seemed, like, so nice and sweet and fierce at the same time, which is, you know, it's a great combination, and people thought she should have won. I think BB Zaharbanay should have won because... Nina had some really great. She's looks. funny. She's really funny. Yes, and intentional always... or not, like she was really funny. Yes, yeah, she was really funny. But I don't know, Bibi Zahar Bene. I couldn't imagine her not winning. If I look back, I think she's amazing. I don't care how she did on um, All Stars. That was All Stars, right? Yeah. yeah. No. What? What was yeah, that? Yeah, it was All Stars. All Stars. Okay. I'm like, I don't even remember. Um, yeah, I don't care how she did. I still think she's amazing and. Her looks are great, and she put some songs out that I didn't care about, but... Um, and to our knowledge, she has not threatened to bomb any RuPaul events, so... Yes. So that'll probably happen next year. They'll bring out all of season two. Oh, if they just I feel re- like that's not gonna happen. I don't think that's oh. gonna happen. <laughs> Maybe all over right, because they'll have no winner. Um, so they'll have to bring out season three with Raja and Jujube and... Oh, I like those else. people. I've seen What's them. It? I no, saw them. Be, wait, Juju B season two, Manila and Raja. That's season three. Okay. Not bad at. <laughs> okay, so um, that was fun. I didn't like when they did that lip sync season one versus season ten. That was just such so stupid. I liked that they had lip syncing on there though, like let people perform, but they were all wearing outfits they couldn't move in, mm-hmm. and it was all just in like swaying with their arms doing stuff. I'm like. <laughs> This whole thing could have been boiled down to about a half an hour. Like sure. like those dancers and stuff. I was like, come, come on. Mm-hmm. Well, 
Do you want to talk about looks, like what everybody's looks? I yes. know you did last last episode, but I hadn't seen them yet. The reunion episode was fucking horrible. I liked this a lot more than the reunion. You know what I've written? Through the help of my therapist, I have come to the realization that I like RuPaul, the character in drag. I cannot stand RuPaul, the man out of drag. I could see that. I could see that. What did you think of her look this season, this episode? Because I thought it just looked like every other thing she's ever done in the history of time. It does. Well, her dresses have looked the same for a long time. Yeah, I guess. I want to say if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But in this case, someone needs to break it. I mean, it, <laughs> it was kind of fun to see her walk the catwalk back and forth a few times and do a couple shuck and jive a, a little bit. But I was like, you know. What's that mean? Shuck and jive. Like do a couple dance moves back and forth. You know, shimmy shake. <laughs> These are some slang terms that I am not aware of. <laughs> But okay, yeah, that was fun. I, I like that. But I just thought her look was so super boring. Um, but yeah, let's talk about some of the, some of the looks here. We'll start with like the main looks, and then we'll get to the, um, the lip sync looks when we get there. So who did you like? Blair Sinclair. Yes, Blair, St- Blair St. Clair. This she should have wore this on the show because this is pretty, and. Amazing. Let me tell. I think you might be the drag whisperer because, or the Long Island drag medium, because Blair Sinclair looked like pure money. She looks so good. I'm gonna even say unclockable because she's so um, petite. That dress, makeup, everything. She looked amazing. Yeah, she sort of stole the show. I think with her look. Um, I know some of these bitches tried to do that and they didn't um like who else was really who was your favorite besides blair obviously um besides blair uh, i thought the vixen looked really good quite honestly that purple i thought was yeah it was all right okay i mean maybe she wasn't the best no it's just not super memorable i'm not i'm not well remembering i think i brought her up because my opinion changed of her during this episode which we'll get to because my opinion kind of changed on her um but aquaria looked amazing yeah. i mean oh asia I, looked good yes asia looked good with that like starburst crown it was thing. like egyptian uh-huh. some shit yeah mm. my least what favorite is probably yua hamasaki wore just what she always wears I know. I did kind of like her lip syncing when that in that battle thing. Um, who was she lip syncing with? Somebody from season one, and I thought she was doing a better job. I can't remember who was it. Was it was it Aunt Gina? No. No, Aunt Gina was with somebody t- teeny and cute. Also, what did you think about Dusty Dusty Ray Bottoms? Um, like I I texted you this. I feel feel like she's like a Dollar Tree version of Alaska. <laughs> like, <laughs> I wanted you to say that. <laughs> okay, she's she set it up. She's like a melted Barbie. Like she's like a poor impression of something greater. Oh, like a, a Barbie left on someone's dashboard. Yeah, the... she's like one of those Barbies from Dollar Tree that's hollow inside. It's not like plastic. It's just like zero substance. But um. Yeah, they're like Barbie, but it's the generic one. So her name isn't Barbie, but it's like, I don't know. Yeah. Like Kitty, or I don't know, like some like other doll. It's like, take Alaska minus the fashion, fun, and comedy. And there's Dusty. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was harsh. Ruthless. <laughs> Ruthless. That's like. Look at the home. last episode. Go big or go home. And I we're know, going right? home. So, Ms. Cracker, what did you think of? her in this episode. boring as hell oh my god pass yeah, i'll talk about something else i really like monet exchange i thought it was super fun when she won miss congeniality and but her dress hmm. mm-hmm. it's ugly i mean she relied on that sponge thing that was like she took that way too far it was funny for like one half of a second and i was like stop it's not funny anymore it's not funny it's not fun just like facts or facts it wasn't funny i'm like did these people not know when to end a joke i agree and you know her dress i just realized is the color of the sponge right green yeah yeah yellow. i didn't get that till just now and i'm like looking at it online and her wig is like super tall i mean her makeup looked good though i mean i'll give her that so what do you think about vanjie 
was her look and everything she did live up to the hype of Miss Vanjie? I think she looked really pretty and she looked tinier than I remember. So I, of, of course, I'm always supporting weight loss. She looked great to me. She covered up that chest tattoo that's pretty hideous pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. What I, do you think? Oh, I liked her. I thought her her waist was definitely snatched for sure. I didn't like her wig. I think her wig looks like a wig. You know what I mean? It like looks like a wig. Like the hair, it looks it looks cheap. I did not like her wig. And when she like you said about ending a joke, okay, so I am I liked the Miss Vanjie thing, but when she like backed up and did it on this finale, I'm just like I felt nothing. Yeah, because it's past. It's it's expired at this point. Yes. For sure. You know who else I felt looked kind of not very good? Is Eureka. I just, I don't understand. Like, her mind is still half in, like, the pageant world, where it needs to get out of there. Like, coming out in that, like, Scarlett O'Hara-inspired sort of dress where she, like, took the hoop skirt off. Why'd the hoop skirt come off, though? I don't know. I don't a know. reveal that's yeah, less reveal. fabulous than the original? Uh, no. That's right. But she's really good at that. I mean, this whole episode, when we get to the lip syncs, like... Oh, she had a whole bag of tricks. She was uh, trying every single thing, every reveal, every wig under a wig. I mean, it was like... It was so desperate. It was very desperate. Well, those are about the best <clears throat> best and um, mention, you know, worth looks worth mentioning, I think. I think so. I think we covered it. Yeah, me too. So there were some things that happened during this um, episode I thought were interesting, like Oprah was on there. But, you know, Rue just did Oprah's show or whatever magazine. Like, where whatever. are they now or some bullshit. Yeah, they just did that. So it's not some super stretch that... No, if, like, Obama <laughs> or Michelle <laughs> Obama came on, I would be like, whoa. You know, I, but... I thought it was coming, and I don't think I'd even care because it was like oh, here's Dame Judi Dench and her daughter. And I'm like, they don't watch this bullshit. And I don't care if they do. Like, what, 10 years later, you're all all of a sudden into it? Like, give me a break. Yeah. Where were they? Where were they then? Why wasn't season one, like, you like, know. we were the ones calling our cable companies going, what the fuck is Logo and how do I find it? Like, we were adding on subscription packages. I want an award. I want my moment on the reunion saying, look, I called DirecTV Dish Dish Network trying to figure out where the hell I could watch this bullshit. I, I'm the real supporter. Dame Judy Dench, she got the DVD sent oh, to her. Yeah, Dame Judy Dench. Okay, right, right, right. Yes. I was like, what the fuck? When Dame Judy, du- like, what the action? I no uh-uh i can't i can't that's too random that is too random it, it's it's very like oh everybody i know everybody like sally jesse Raphael, and i'm like oh because she's so busy she couldn't do a voiceover for drag race i mean please well yeah and you know um one thing to point out about jame duty judy dench is supposedly she's going blind <laughs> so i'm not real so allegedly so i'm not real confident in her opinion of watching drag race just saying. So she's not judging looks. <laughs> Obviously, she's not into the look. She's into the what? The singing? The... I don't freaking know. Oh, well, whatever. Okay, so... I... When I watched this, I started... Wa- okay, so I started watching this at a bar because it's the finale. I wanted to do that. I've had fun a few times here in St. Louis, even though it sucks. Um, nobody goes. And I went, I was there like 20 minutes and I'm like, it was pissing me off. I don't know if it's because it was getting to the interview parts where they're like, let's talk to your family stuff or what. I just checked Mm -hmm. the fuck out. I'm like, I'm going home. So I came home, but there was a horrible storm here. And so my dish network fucked all up and it cut out a whole bunch of that. Is there anything that you noticed during the interview parts or when they interviewed all the top ones that worth mentioning? The only okay, okay, the only thing that really stuck out to me was during Cameron's interview, which of course she was trying to be more vocal than usual because she's the silent but deadly, which is a really kind of gross like way to describe yeah. yourself. Yeah, um, for sure. They like uh, skyped in her grandma from the nursing home, and her grandma's like, "Hi, what's her name? Dane or something?" Yeah. How do I even know that? Hi, Dane. <laughs> it's me, Grandma. <laughs> and I just want to say that I'm really, and I'm not making fun of her. I'm just trying to 
give you the moment. I'm, I saw your level of talent and I'm very surprised and I'm very excited for you. But the gist of it was nowhere in that did she say, I love you and I'm proud of you and I think it's great. It was just like, I'm very surprised at your ability to twerk on stage. You know what I mean? I'm surprised you made it to the top four. Just like Right. <laughs> it's like, oh, so you're gay. Oh, and you dress like a woman. Oh my God, and you're on TV. It was, I think it was a lot for her. I just found out five minutes ago and then I flatlined. Right. And they had to bring me back from the break. <laughs> God bless her. I hope she lives forever. She's very adorable. Okay, and the other one was Eureka's mother was in the audience who has some kind of cancer or something. So she has that neck thing where you have to like oh, put your finger and, oh. and like, hi, Eureka. I'm not oh, making fun. God. I'm not <laughs> making fun. No, I'm really not. It's very, very sad. No, I mean it. I can't I imagine like anything do, but... worse than your mother being ill, so I'm not making yeah. fun. But yeah. the thing I, Eureka was like, when Rue said, what would you do with the prize money? And Eureka's like, well, I'd like to pay off my mama's bills, because as you can see, she can't uh, talk or eat normal, and she's got a lot of medical bills. And first of all, I'm like, I'd file bankruptcy or some shit. I don't know what, I, I don't know if I'd use my prize money for that, but I do hope her mom gets better, because... She seems real. She seems like she and she has a twin sister, so she seems like she has a really sweet family. So, okay, well that's good. Good for her. Yeah, I'm yeah. Glad yeah. She had some moments you didn't. Want I'm just saying, I don't her. think the prize money needs to go to medical bills because honestly, there's ways out of that. Yeah, that's like a um, little manipulative. If you, like, if you like win money off of a scratch off, you can't pay bills with that. No, not any big bills. No, that's like surprise money. Oh, you go buy something frivolous. So sorry, Greg. Sorry. Oh, the, okay. They, they, <laughs> have to get they interview um, Aquarius family who I fucking love. I love Italians. I love Jews. I love, I just love a minority. And they're like from Philly. And I love that his name's Giovanni and like his parents own like a deli or something. And like, you want a Philly cheese steak? And it was all just, it was so, it reminded me of Mob Wives. It was just so good and juicy. I just loved them. Do you think he's related to Big Ange? They should have oh. covered that. I should have asked. God only. <laughs> Ancestry.com. Like, it's just everything I love. I, I mean, they're so great. And they love him. They don't care. His dad's, you know, a big Italian guy. He doesn't give a shit that his son's sitting up there in a dress. It's so progressive and fantastic. Right. And just think about, like, the lip sync with um, Aquaria using those, like, confetti things. How she used those. And her parents are sitting in the audience. I'm like it's amazing like total acceptance yes i love it i'm totally i love her and their family love them love them okay so let's talk about the lip syncs is there anything we need to talk to before we get there because like i said my shit cut out i didn't get to see it all now nah, we good okay let's do it so they brought out that big old wheel and spun it with their pictures on it and spun it to see who mm. gets the lip sync against who they did this last season they spun the wheel and they lip synced against each other. You should have warned um, me. This was so embarrassing. Yeah, it was. Well, let's talk about their looks, I think, first. So the, we'll go through the lip syncs and talk about the looks. Okay. So the first lip sync, Cameron Michaels got picked from the wheel and they said to, um, you know, she had to pick who she was going to lip sync against. I read this interview with Cameron who said that. It took her way longer than that to decide because she didn't want to and they had to edit it out. I'm like, oh my God. I believe it. I bet she was like, oh, I just I don't want to, I don't want to send any of these girls home because they're all so talented. Bitch, pick somebody. For real. I bet pick they Pick Eureka, bitch. They probably just took like a recording of Cameron saying Asia's name and just played like dubbed it. <laughs> I hate it. indecisiveness. God, it's so annoying. So they had to do two Janet Jackson songs. They brought out two members of the pit crew. Hey, Sean Morales. Love hey, you. Sean. Call me. I love him. I love that um, both, yeah. both those boys. And um, yeah, so they brought these boxes out and Asia picked number one. Always number one. So it ended up being nasty. Janet Jackson. Okay, so. I feel like I need to pause, have a moment of silence <laughs> for this lip so first of all 
my first um, impression was, what the fuck is Asia? What it? What is that? How can you stand there without a you know with a straight face wearing that? Now I see you see drag queens are supposed to dress however they dress, <laughs> and I've seen some amazing, ridiculous, crazy things. But I'm like, that is so ugly. You and knew I'm, something was up at that point. Yeah, something is happening. You knew there was a reveal or something bizarre was going to happen. Something. And then we had Cameron, who's wearing a robe. Um, okay, fine. So, Rue, I like did like Rue when two queens stand behind me. I thought it was kind of fun. Was. Um, so the lip sync starts, and Cameron's doing her deal with her hairography. She's so good at hairography. Oh, she is. I noticed that, too. And then Asia. So, okay, so the first time I watched this, with this whole butterfly fiasco, I was... Like, what is going on? What is happening here? Like, I, I just, I, it was like so embarrassing. I like felt really bad for her. Not because she should not be using butterflies. No one should use any live creature like that on stage at all. So, you know, I was pissed about that. Right. I'm a vegan. Was, I'm a vegan. Um, I thought that was wrong.com. And I want to be like, well, that serves you right, bitch. And I am a little bit of that. However,. I think Asia doesn't seem like a terrible person, and I didn't want her to fail. Let's just put it that way. Same. I didn't want her if that to... trumped the pardon the expression. That trumped the um, the butterflies dying or not performing. It, actually, Joe Jackson should have trained those butterflies because they did not know their choreography. They did not know their <laughs> cues. Um, well, but I felt I... more bad for her. Not it. It didn't go as planned then the butterflies die because who gives a shit like a butterfly dies in like a day i'm not saying butterfly lives don't matter hashtag but they do of course but i i was more disappointed that it didn't work out for her i heard she used live kittens in the rehearsal so at least she changed it up she did not no i made that up <laughs> okay well first of all the butterflies to me are more important than her passing or failing i just still felt bad that she failed because it's like the biggest stage of drag in the world and she does this like total bomb because she relied match. totally on the butterflies flying yeah. that was the whole point of it and the thing is is what she should have done is if she wanted if she, she first of all she should never have done this but if she loses her mind enough to do it like she did the first time it doesn't work stop do you think there was a dress rehearsal with, with fake butterfly? And then those dead butterflies were all over the stage and I was distracted when everybody else came out. I'm like, there's a butterfly right there. People are stomping on them and shit. I'm like, I'm disturbed. Well, I read they like, they picked them up the best that they could. Oh, I know Peta right. is Peta is pissed at her for using that. And I'm sorry, but I am too. But I, I'm separating my brain enough to say, Asia, because I can imagine doing something like, you know, I'm trying to impress and you, you've everybody's done it and you fall flat on your face like immediately. And then you're embarrassed. Like, and this is like that times a thousand. Yeah, it was, it was bad. Well, so obviously Cameron wins that next lip sync. Cameron had a really good outfit. That was the, the Whitney queen of the night outfit. I liked. Yeah. She looked great. Like she won this. She probably could have won this by sitting down. <laughs> probably she had a beard this whole episode though she had like a painted i don't know if it was her her makeup like her um contouring or whatever but it looked like she had a beard this whole episode it bothered me it was a little dark but that's hard okay so rue eliminates a, uh asia because it was a fucking mess and she's like okay cameron you're still going on yeah fine she's like if i have to pick it's you yeah so then <clears throat> they spin the wheel Actually, I guess they didn't spin the wheel. Was Bob the Barker comes the out. Was that the only time they spun that wheel? The one time? I think they spun it again. I don't know why, but I guess well, they, they... Well, they couldn't have because the other two lip-synced against each other. Oh, no, you're right. So they made that giant fucking wheel to spin it once. <sighs> I just realized that. Like, that is so ridiculous. So, <laughs> excuse me. So, uh, um... Aquaria then lip synced against Urethra, and they got If by Janet Jackson. Um, okay, so what did you think of this lip sync before I launch into it? Um, I thought Aquaria didn't stand a chance, and then 
You mean a Eureka? Eureka. And then Aquarius started doing like the actual music video choreography, which was brought to my attention. Uh, thanks, Aubrey. Because I, I don't remember. That was it. That was. And I was like, um, she won this entire thing. Like, she looks better. It, it's just so much better all the way around. What about you? Yeah, I. Well, first of all, that silver thing Aquarius came out wearing reminded me of one of those fortune tellers you make with paper. You know oh yeah, I was thinking a cupcake holder. Yeah, or a cupcake holder. It just it looked like a lot of different things, like takeout. It was very chin. cute how she couldn't move her arms. It was just adorable. <laughs> it it was cute. It wasn't like sometimes they do come out with like like weird re- like okay. So do you remember All Stars with Alaska when she did um, pound cake, little pound cake, and um, her reveal? Okay, I love Alaska, but it was ridiculous. She was basically just covered in a trash bag, and she ripped off the trash bag. <laughs> like off of her head and she was pound cake like even i was like okay i love this pound cake so much i don't care however that was still kind of a terrible reveal um but this was fine you know what i mean like at first i was like what then i'm like no i'm good with this like i can say eureka had like three reveals wig and costume during that performance and all i remember is aquarius yeah she Eureka was so desperate like okay so this is what I think with any kind of reveal it needs to enhance the performance enhance the song have something to do with the song go along with the song something other than just doing something to do it is such a mistake Asia O'Hara you know so Eureka ripping that ugly wig off to see another ugly wig that ugly red (laughs) thing a tangled mess tangled mess that's and one thing i will say about roxy when she took that wig off the other wig was laid it was straight it was in order yeah it was approved by congress <laughs> it was not stopped at the border like it was totally together it was not kept from its parent wig no. actually it might have been at the bus uh, stop. yeah it just had something to do with the 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 lip like it just worked with the lip sync so Eureka's were just that could have been with any song at any time, whatever. Any any brunch across America. Well, she came out in full like feathers, like a boa or whatever, and then just something a, a corset or something around her waist. It was a really cheap reveal. Yeah, it was not a good reveal. And so then Aquaria, her she had that silver thing ripped it off into this spiky looking outfit on, which I'm sure, um, what's her face mad who's the one who won the cones or the cones like madonna. this before but not like huh? <laughs> madonna. Say madonna well no not good like this but she tried to do the spiky thing what's her face she had ornation on her head god i just can't think of her name. oh you know we don't know her name dynamo or some shit yeah <laughs> maldo has arrived exclamation she, point yeah oh there is dax exclamation point but that's not her but anyway um she did a spiky thing, but not like this. Like, this was really good. Perfect color, perfect hair, perfect makeup. And, um... Tim so Don approved. Re- yes, yeah. Her reveal. And the if dance moves, like you said, were so good. It was like, I, Aquari just like, or Eureka just disappeared in the background. It was fabulous. And I was like, oh my god. And... This is where I thought, like, Aquaria, you're so good. I see you, like, moving. I don't think she's going to be, like, a touring club queen. I see her going further than that. I know I'm being optimistic. I'm waxing optimistic. I feel like she's fashion, vogue, runways, maybe coming out with a line of some shit. Maybe collaborating with Marquesa on molestation-free ball (laughs) gowns for the Met Gala. What? Yeah, like those, um, what are those? A chastity belt. Yeah. Designer chastity belt. Oh my God, I'm, I want to be on the wait list for that. Uh, okay. Um, and you know, I read this interview with Eureka, who is, I think, a little bit, a lot bitter about this. Mm-hmm. Because she was talking about reveals and how if you try to do something out of your comfort zone, it can make put you in a weird space. And she said that um, just like with, Aquaria, when she took the, you had the cone reveal and the Miss Vanjie fan that it just made her put her in a nervous place and and you couldn't really tell by watching it on TV, but you could live. I'm like, shut up, you bitch. I'm like, you sad, jealous bitch. You know what they say? Life begins at the end of your body mass index. Okay, and so that. Vi- <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, that video for big girl, the big girl or whatever, like it's like the skinny girl at the beginning, like she's like, I want to look like I feel on the inside. And so he makes her, turns her into Eureka. And at first I was like, oh, this is cute. You know, it's kind of funny, blah, blah, blah. And then the next part, I had all these skinny girls who look sad going to this room, like, you know, Dr. Seuss's Sneetches. I don't even know that story where they go into this room and they, this box and they get a star put on them. And the st- people with stars are better than the ones without stars. So the ones without stars. Well, that sounds a lot star. like the Holocaust. Yeah, kind of. So, they go, so these skinny girls walk in and then they come out big girls and they're all happy. I'm like, um, I get body positivity. I think that's great. Whatever. <clears throat> However, I'm not buying the story. <laughs> You know, Isn't that a movie? movie? Okay, that was the movie Shallow Hal, and didn't uh, Amy Schumer just make a movie about that? Like, be big and be happy? Yeah, and it's great, but you, I don't know if wanting to be <laughs> is the best choice for your health. Okay, but... here, here's where I differ. I don't give a shit about health, skinny or fat, but uh, what I'm saying is, if you're gonna be big, be big and fabulous and fierce and and gorgeous you don't have to be big and sloppy and eating a bucket of fried chicken like you can this is what i'm waiting for somebody to take it to that level where it's like i'm fierce like you know and be and also big i just happen to be big and and you know eureka kind of did that and also just because you're big doesn't mean you're not healthy but i'm just saying right it's just you know it's i didn't really understand the point of that message but yes and Eureka kind of did. She had her moments that she was good. It's just her mouth ruined everything for me. Like, as soon as you think she's fine, you're just like, shut up. Oh, bitch. Oh, bitch. You well, know, let like, me make a comparison. Good. Okay. In the early 90s, well, early, late 80s, early 90s, um, there weren't a lot of black models, supermodels on runways. Then along came Naomi Campbell, the most beautiful human being to ever walk the earth. And that opened people's eyes up to say, oh, shit, black girls can be couture and fabulous. And it opened up a whole new world. She was a groundbreaker. A big girl could do that. I'm sorry, it's not Ashley Graham. It's not you, girl. And Eureka, I don't think it's you either. But I think it could be somebody. And, you know, if we like, you know, to risk sounding like a a hypocrite, Divine is the most famous classic, uh, you know, trailblazing big queen ever existed and she was and she had glamorous moments they were definitely divine glamorous moments they were not like you know you couldn't compare her to anybody you know she was incredible but you know what she was that eureka isn't interesting yeah everything she did was interesting you wonder what she was going to do next because she could do anything she was fearless groundbreaking legendary iconic hilarious yes 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 so I think if, and I don't expect Eureka, in fact, I don't like when she did that Divine inspired look. I'm like, keep your shit off of the Divine. Thank you very much. But if she could just be more fearless and and try to do something other than let's just make a video about me being a big girl eating off of a buffet and name all the foods I want to eat. It's very you know low like, hanging fruit, which she would avoid. <laughs> It's very low, it's low hanging biscuits and gravy. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so they both got to stay. And you know what I thought whenever that happened? <clears throat> that was Rue telling um Aquaria that a double save can happen whenever she wants it to happen. Because remember Aquaria was like, the double save happened and now they don't ever do two in a season. Remember? Yeah, so basically Rue is on Aquarius' schedule. Yes, she was letting her have it a little bit. But in a good way. Like, it was good. Like, I was fine with them both winning. It was fine. Sure, because we all knew Aquarius was going to win. We knew from day one. Yes. I know we've him hawed back and forth, but seriously, I think we knew she was going to win. I mean, you got to keep it interesting, because anything could happen. But we knew she was going to win. So we got the third lip sync. Um, we have Aquaria versus Eureka versus Cameron. They did Bang Bang. Do you like that song? I liked it at the time. I'm over it now. Yeah, it's I liked da- it. it's it's like a it's a little like over way past its uh, time by now. But th- but Drag Race does that. I mean, they <laughs> no use shit. Songs. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they totally use songs when nobody cares anymore. Um, so let's talk about their looks. So we have Cameron, Mike. Cameron Michaels 
she may as well have just not even shown up. I mean, that her look was just so. What was she wearing? That red dress with the black corset and the red matching hair, and she had like a. It was like too much the same colors. I don't like her with the red hair. I think I like her with the black hair the most. Maybe or yeah. maybe blonde. She looked kind of like yeah. My Little Pony or something. Yeah, I don't. I and she had the reveal. She ripped the skirt off. She had that, which was fine, whatever. And then we had um, urethra and that, like, black and white stripe thing. Okay, so I did not hate urethra's outfit. What I didn't like, and it's because I didn't even notice it happened, was she had that corset that said the big girl, and then at the end it said wins. Oh, and I didn't even see her change it. So at the very, Yeah, at the very end when they were announcing who won, I saw that it said wins, and I was like, where did that change? <laughs> I didn't even notice it happened. No, I don't. E- I don't think they used that camera shot. I guess because I don't either. Yeah, it was like so forgettable. I mean, obviously, my brain didn't even register it unless I was busy staring at Aquaria because she was so amazing. I like. I think Aquaria's look was pretty. Oh, uh, she was all over the place doing acrobatics, flying like Batgirl over yeah. up across the stage. I was like, give this bitch the money. Yeah, let's just end this this painful slow death for Urethra and Cameron right now. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, where she like flicked that spark at the beginning. That was brilliant. Get the eyes on you immediately. And that's <sighs> what she did. I mean, like, it was look like... Look at me, bitch. Don't even look at these other whores. You know, I'm all for an open flame on stage at any time. Um, not a Tyra Sanchez level flame, but she just did a mini version and I was all for it amazing and then she had those confetti things that she used at just the right moment of the song i'm like what were these other bitches thinking that i mean don't they y'all didn't come with nothing no dead butterflies no pyrotechnics what the fuck were y'all doing something like i get like whenever you know this episode was coming up i thought bitch you guys you all better have some stunts because Sasha Valor last, do you remember? Did you watch the end of last season? I know you weren't into it. No, in fact, when Sasha came out this season, I was like, who the fuck is Sasha Valor? She looks great. Well, watch the end when they do the lip sync at the end because they're doing, um, I think it's How Do I Know If He Really Loves Me, I think, Whitney Houston. And she pulls off her wig because she's a bald queen. She is bald like a lot of her looks. And all these red petals, rose petals fell out. Oh, of I saw wig. that in the recap. Yeah. And then she pulled the glove off and the petals fell out. And then the, it was amazing. So I'm like, Beautiful. bitch is better this season. Better come back with something because that's going to make you all look bad. Sasha looked really great when she came out holding the crown. Like she kind of went with the scenery. Like I was like, even though I've never met her, I was like, she looks so beautiful. Yeah, that was a really interesting outfit. It reminded me of like. Don't well, even say if, if you say what I'm thinking, I'm going to freak out. Go ahead. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I was just thinking Alien, but I was thinking like, um, oh, what did it remind me of? Uh, what were you going to say? I was going to say Isabella Rossellini when she gets the potion and she pricks Madeline Ashton's finger. And she oh, yeah. looks at, like it, she, it just looks so beautiful. And she was holding that crown. Yes. Yeah. She's, She's pretty great. Of, kind of a reach, wanna... but I, I liked her. No, sure, sure. I think she was incredible. Um, Okay, so this lip sync happened. (sighs) Reveals were questionable. (laughs) (laughs) And it was time for them to pick a winner. And obviously... Oh, we didn't mention this. So, Cameron and Urethra did not know all the words of this song. They didn't. No, they didn't. Nope, and Cameron was, like, whipping her hair around to cover up. She didn't know the song, the words. We've all and been then there. It, and, yeah, right, I know, like, every day of my life, girl. But um, Urethra, in that interview I read, someone said to her, um, you know, you didn't know the words. And she was like, I, I did know the words. That was the editing. So I'm just going to keep my opinion to myself. Blame it on the editing, the oldest excuse in the book. And Cameron, earlier in the show, maybe it was when you had the storm coming through, she said, 
when Rue said, like, what's your job? What's your biggest thing with drag? Whatever. And she was like, well, first of all, I'm an entertainer and I need to know the words. And everybody applauded. Big fake applause, canned applause from the audience. And I'm like, okay, bitch. Well, (laughs) you didn't know these words. She didn't. And that's so sad. I'm like, bitches, this is the most important lip sync of the entire season. And it's an easy song. Bang, bang. I mean, come on. Yep. And then um, Aquaria even knew that, like, Nicki Minaj rap part. It was, like, rapid fire, whatever. It was so good. Mm -hmm. The whole thing. So, overall, I mean, this finale wasn't so amazing. And most, the biggest problem was the performances were just so meh. You know? They just weren't quality. Except for maybe... Aquaria and maybe Cameron in the first lip sync. Well, I know we always go back to this, but I wish there could have been like a warm up, Alyssa Edwards warm up. I feel like there was room for somebody. I don't know. The judges were like in the second row. They barely got any screen time. I'm like, they couldn't have got up on stage and, you know, there couldn't have been like a catwalk situation, a fashion review. I don't know, something. But you know, the last um, couple of seasons, they enter. Well, they talked to the, you know, Michelle Visage. I'm glad they didn't know. <laughs> <'Cause>... <laughs> well, they look, didn't... she got to do. She got to do the announcements. So. Oh, ring a ding ding. <laughs> yeah, but we found her. It's Eureka. I'm like, where'd oh, that come from? I don't remember uh, hearing that shit before. Yeah, because they were like Eureka. Remember her dress said like an ex about fight. I'm like, we found her. Now, how do we get rid of her? And I don't know if anybody said that. They said we found her, but how do we get her to shut up or something like that? But I'm like, we found I, I her. I don't remember yeah. that. Yeah. How do we get rid of her? She's an she's skinny, white, and salty. It's Ms. Pandora Bo- Cracker. Cracker. <laughs> the disappointment of season 10. Yeah. And I read this other thing online that was talking about like the top 10 losers who really were winners. And Ms. Cracker was one of them because it said like, <laughs> failure or superstar or something and it, and some it was a joke like some of the ones that said failure were not failures they were they were just it was just a catty thing but i really think some people really like miss cracker because it said superstar i'm like and how did you come up with that no i don't think so no i'm, I'm like i'm comfortable she? in our position on miss cracker don't hate her don't love her think it could have been more Wish she would go away forever. Sure. You know. Yeah. Just a few <laughs> tips. Oh, okay. So what did you think of, you know, I talked about the Vixen and I said that my opinion changed a little bit on, of her and it kind of did. Um, a couple things happened. Like, you know, after that whole Asia O'Hara boohooing during the reunion. And then, then I guess the vixen went online and made a video that was like, I don't need nobody to help me. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't like, Oh, Asia, thank you for saving me. She was like, I don't need no help, which I thought was good. And Fuck also, all y'all. Yeah. Yeah. And I did think she looked amazing. And I liked that she was rooting for Aquaria, which was fun to see that. Cause she was like, Aquaria, Aquaria. And I'm like, I kind of like this bitch. Like, I don't, you know, I like I her she... too. I don't know. Like I said, I identified it with her emotional outburst and ang- uh, unfounded anger. <laughs> like something about it just, I-, I didn't hate her. I wasn't mad at her for it. Like I kind of, I kind of felt where she was coming from a little did bit. You, did you just say identified? Identified. <laughs> identified it. That's like influential. Influential. Um, influential. I identified in, in her influentiality. I'm an independent woman. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, you know, I bet she learned her less, her lesson. I should say her lesson. I bet she learned a lot from this experience, especially with that um, reunion. Just that, you know, to maybe some, what's the word? Discreetness is necessary to um stay present what's the word what am i trying to say like like restraint like like restraint and not just like don't give it all away unless you're getting paid yes Ah, okay (laughs) oh my god that was hard for me to say um yeah like if you know don't say everything that you're thinking 
Um, you don't need to. Like, I bet she learned a lot from this. Oh, I, know. I, I, I think she did. I think she will be um, battling Mystique Summers Madison to headline Hamburger Mary's Brunch probably in the next couple weeks. She'll be, you know, oh. <laughs> angling for a raise, trying to headline that shit. Mystique Summers <laughs> I'm from Chicago. Why do I even remember that? I don't know. <laughs> Let me read a couple comments because you know that's my favorite. I love oh, co- I love comments. I just Let have a couple. Them. This is from, um, oh no, they didn't, on Live Journal. Uh, somebody, Tank Machine, says, I'm more relieved about Eureka losing than I am happy about Aquaria winning, to be honest. Honestly, mm. though, I hope she's never on All Stars. I hope she just fucks back off to Tennessee so I ignore her so I can ignore her she can't possibly be on all stars being on the show for three seasons the audience shouldn't be made to suffer like that in all caps okay (laughs) and the second one is this this show has finally jumped the shark after that abysmal finale from the high school production values shade and predictable twist to that anticlimactic crowning I got so much secondhand embarrassment from watching it. Aquaria's frigid reaction really summed it up. LMAO. I'm fine with that, by the way, because it's all fake. They don't know who's winning. Was that your comment? <laughs> no, but it could have been. This must be my soul sister right here. But I'm like, how can you? I mean, you can only fake like being excited about winning 100 grand. I'm like, do I get the money or not? Well, the end, though, you know, they record three different endings. Right. And then they show. So you would have to fake winning. And some people you know? aren't good at faking. Are you? Well, you know, depends on who you <laughs> ask. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, so the, you can go and watch the real reveal um, of the winner online. Like they show them sitting there watching the episode. And then they have some videos of people coming on saying, I'm so proud of you stuff like family and whatever. And then they announce who wins. It's actually pretty good. I would suggest watching it. No, I remember that. I I mean, it's ridiculous that we have to do that, but fine, I'll watch it. You just stretch the shit out so much. I watched the one with Alaska, and I remember being proud. And then she, like, went on the stage in Vegas somewhere, and it was very... I don't know. Yeah, and well, like, during the thing, the um, live reveal, so they say Aquaria wins, she comes out, and she starts talking to the audience, and then Aquaria like runs in with a microphone and starts blasting and then Aquaria just stops talking. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's what I thought of is all. I think they need to do like talking about, we'll give our full like suggestions, list of suggestions on how to fix this show because they do need to fix it. I think they need to, when they crown the winner, they need to do it live and what they need to do is do it inside, put the crown on them and then have them walk. Look, I'm going to make a Game of Thrones reference, which I told you i don't understand but i do remember this scene remember when that bitch like did something wrong they shaved her head and made her walk naked through the streets and yelled shame at her remember that yeah yeah put the crown on the bitch make her walk through the streets and have the fans lined up like the royal wedding and you know i think that's a better way to crown the one they don't need to do it in the fox theater and they should, she's, they should try to get people to get cherry pie, get certificates. That's right. Where the hell is Nicole Page Brooks and why wasn't she <laughs> featured? I don't know. What the fuck? If they do All Stars 4, I swear to God, if she's not on there, we're going to burn those studios down. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I'm putting the countdown on our website, dragdungeon.com. Boom. I know. Tyra Sanchez. Just actually. kidding. Don't rate us, please. JK, JK, JK. Um... <laughs> um yeah something like they gotta revamp this shit like they need to like god i don't know like that's the thing about dragula their challenges are well you know season one they like buried them alive and i don't like anything to do with like using bugs or anything alive but they dump some alive shit on them in the dark which i'm not saying i approve that but i'm saying do something else you know, something more violent more violent like okay so hang them upside down over um i don't know like a tank full of piranhas and sure. <laughs> and then give them each swords and they have to like sword fight and the first one who i don't know does something like because you can't really hurt them knocks the crown off the other one's heads the one who loses gets dropped in the piranha tank 
and the other that could be the finale and then the other one wins the crown uh, i'm i'm in i'm just throwing that out there off the top of my head just, i'm down you know, with everything you mentioned yeah I'm... brainstorming just you know whatever <laughs> They just need to do something else. Do something, please. I know it's too late because that next season is in the can. They're trying to tell us it's not. It's already in the can. Yes, that's done. And it's going to be the same ass shit. We'll see how that goes. But as the ratings go up, the less they're going to change anything. I mean, Ju- chance. Judy Dench is, in, is all, all balls in. So, you know, that's going to bring in tons of viewers. Judy Dench. Did they explain why she was there? Because I didn't see. I just saw she was. No, it was like I'm rich and famous, and I have all these friends, and I'm I'm campaigning for another Emmy. Okay, then whatever. Michelle Visage, <laughs> meanwhile, second row, got zero sc- screen time. I know she's like, but I was in Seduction. Why aren't they interviewing me spontaneously like Judy Dench? She could have had a few more moments. Whatever. Yeah, she could have had something. We told you I mean, to put out a single, was... girl. I don't know why she's so hesitant to put out a single. Put a single out. I know you can only say so many times you're in seduction and use as an excuse for things. <laughs> right, because like, we're aging out. Like everybody that has sedu- like Cameron's grandma in the nursing home is probably like seduction. That was my favorite group. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I love seduction. Uh, Michelle Visage is there. You know, when I was a little girl, I was <laughs> in the Oregon Trail. <laughs> Put a single out. Everybody got a single. Sahara Davenport got a single, don't you? And she's dead. <laughs> when dead folks got singles and you don't, I mean, come on, step it up, girl. Yeah, she needs to do something. Like everything is. I'm in seduction. No, she doesn't really do that. But <laughs> I want her to. I want her to do something other than be Ruth Lackey. I think everybody should have a single if you, at this point. I know. We need to get to work on ours. Yours could be called I Hate Drag Race. I already have a single. Thanks for your support. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. What's it called? Do you want to plug it? It's called Who I Am. It's on iTunes. Link in bio. Who I Am. Hmm. So who are you? Oh, wait. I got to listen to the song to find out. <laughs> <laughs> and I sing our intro, which I'm changing because I don't want to get sued. Oh, because it's, Yeah. Nothing. That was a joke because we talked shit about some, <laughs> something about somebody stealing something. I forgot, but I'm changing it. Oh, yeah, it was um, Iggy Azalea, right? Is that who it was? Oh, Azalea Banks. Azalea Paul. Banks. Oh, my God. How many times have people said that? So we talked about it and then I covered it as a joke because I was like, Fuck, sue me. Shit. Well, we could use the promotion, but, you know, I'm changing it back. Yeah. The suing part's not so good. The being in the news for it, now that's what we're Yeah, I mean, the promotion. We could do flat tummy tea. We'd get so many endorsements. It would be ridiculous. I know. Squatty uh, potty, call us. Call us squatty potty. I want to get one of those clear plastic ones or one of those what, bamboo kind that go with any decor. Oh, so chic. Shoo. Well, all right. Well, I guess that's the finale. Um, See you next year. <laughs> no, we'll be back before that. Soon as, if, if before this, I'm sure. But Dragula coming out, keeping an eye on it. We'll have to talk about the leading up to it because I cannot wait. It's going to be amazing. Because the first the first season was so good. The second was even better. So this third one is just going to be, I think, epic. Okay, I'm going to turn it on. Follow us at Drag Dungeon on Instagram for our latest and greatest. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Bye. Miss Banji. Miss Banji. Miss Banji. Thanks for listening to Drag Dungeon. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Follow our show on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Periscope at Drag Dungeon. See you next time.